When they say, like, like street cred or credibility, for me, that, those are all things that, if you ask me, I would prefer to not have street credibility, to not have to go through the situations that I went through that were the rough spots. And if you ask me, that, would I prefer to go to college for business, maybe, and try it from a different perspective? I'd try it. I'd still probably have passion for the, the actual art form and be involved in some ways, but I'd rather come from a different angle. Like, those are the toughest parts of my actual life. They don't know what it's like when you're actually going through it. I want to be bigger than the guy who made good hip-hop records. Pop, I was recording it that one hour that it came on in the actual radio, and it was on a cassette tape. I enjoyed hip hop music at a point where the Juice Crew was very big. EPMD, of course, Boogie Down Productions. When KRS was saying, My hand keeps on making it, Brooklyn keeps on taking it, Queens keeps on faking it. I was like, it was so hot, I had to play it over and over. Doom, 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 doom. I memorized hip hop music before that point. Like, you know, it probably was a Big Daddy Kane record, The Wrath of Kane. I play on rappers like a hard and go. It's all about like a water road. So, like, I know freestyles from artists at different points. Like, I, like, Nas at, at different points. It's like clue, clue tapes. Yeah, yeah. DJ Clue. DJ Clue. It wasn't like an official release, but it was more exciting than the official releases to us because it was them speaking directly to the neighborhood. They said things that directly applied to us. I wrote things down all the time. I wrote on my hand, paper, whatever I had around me. I write if the idea came. And I had a habit of um, writing a chorus more than one time. But, and that came from Jam Master J. Like, he'd be like, yo, I like what you said. But like, like the chorus area was like a piece to repeat it, but it wasn't a four bar chorus to repeat it or an eight bar chorus. It wasn't sequenced properly. And it, he used the actual production tools where you go tss, 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 tss. So it would create the outline of how you gotta start here, you gotta end here, and then it has to repeat. You know what I mean? And, and he showed me how to do it. And then he made me do it two and three times before I could actually start the song. So if I pick the track, I like this one, he go, okay. And then I have the task of writing three choruses before he can pick one. He says, use that one. And then I'll write the rest of the record. You know, and I, I impressed him because I wrote music that later came out, the concepts came out on artists' projects that he had the most respect for. I was approaching my actual album release date for Power of the Dollar, and Columbia Records didn't actually understand me as an artist. I wrote How to Rob. The bottom line is, I'm a crook with a deal. If my record don't sell, I'm a rob and steal. We put uh, D Dot, uh, Derek Angeletti on the chorus. But he originated from a skit, from the Biggie skits. He was one of the hitmen. He worked under Puffin as a producer. and. Uh, he came on it to, to give it a a feeling that it was a joke because hip hop would take things literally. You know, the artist would actually feel offended to the point that it could spiral out of control or go into a, a different thing. So they, they had more interest in saying this ain't serious. I, it might have been a little more effective if it didn't say this ain't serious. You know, so I was like, all right, whatever. Like, they had to talk me into, but this ain't serious. Being broke can't make you delirious. You know, I was like, that was the sucker. It was a compromise. At that point, it was desperation. You 
you know, being in the system. And like Get Rich or Die Trying, there was no plan B involved. It was like, if this doesn't work, what's going to work? You know, and when it, the song absolutely impacted to the point that you had artists like, like Jay-Z respond. A lot of artists responded to it, but his one of the notable responses. I'm about a dollar, what the f- is 50 cents? Those are people's egos involved. And the circumstances I was under anyway, it, was, it would mean going back to the neighborhood. If I fail, I just go back to the neighborhood. So what am I subjected to under those circumstances versus the rapper being angry? Drake's hit records are nothing from me. It ain't If I said the same lines, the same words, the same production, same everything, they go, it's whack, man. You know, growing up in Decatur, yeah, I started out playing the trumpet. I had always been a writer, so if I'm writing in the studio, I kind of create something that will take you out of your everyday experience. When I was in high school, people really didn't know I rap. You know, now I'm coming back to my school. It just opens up their imagination. In music, you have to do that. That's what people want. They want to be taken somewhere. This is B.O.B. Take Back Your Music. To see my music videos and more, check out Music Choice On Demand. They tried to sell me a CD based on me being on it. Like, I went past the bootlegger to see if there was anything new that I didn't know about that was out, that was missing. And he was like, yeah, this is new, new 50 Cent. And he didn't know that I was 50 Cent because there was no photographs. At least it was just one photo that I had, that just my profile, the side of my head on a coin. And I thought he was joking at first, and then I looked at him, and he really didn't know exactly who I was. Like, so I was like, all right. And I was, I was actually going to visit Violet at that time. I was trying to see if I could get Chris Lighty and them to actually manage me. And they actually weren't interested at that point, because there was so much energy around me, following being shot and everything. Around it, it made it like, you know, there was never, this is the point that there wasn't a mixtape out yet. And I came back across the street after because I didn't actually get a chance to take the meeting with Chris. I went there and he was on his way out and he was like, I will reschedule it and we'll get there. Like it wasn't important enough for him to let go of what he had what he had going on. So he was taking care of his business and I went back across the street and I asked the guy again, I said, yo, the 50 cent thing is on there. He said, Yeah, yeah, it's hot, you wanna buy it? And I said, yeah, let me get it. And I got it. And that's what gave me the concept and idea of creating my own tapes. This right here is my very first mixtape, 50 Cent is the Future. This is like the mixtape that had all 50 Cent, Boyd Banks and Tony Ayo, straight G on the tape. From there, it kind of goes this way. So it went from 50 Cent is the Future to No Mercy, No Fear, The God's Plan, to Automatic Gunfire, The Bulletproof. And you can see how we was actually changing as artists, even in the actual artwork, because we went from here, and this was all shot in one photo shoot. There's three, and then it got to this, and then here, and then you start seeing the flags because we started touring internationally. You know, different. Because I was dropped, and it was never really announced that I wasn't on Columbia Records anymore, they just stopped answering the phone. That when. 50 Cent is the Future came out, the mixtape. What was a nightmare for an established artist is a dream sequence for an unsigned artist. So the bootleggers bootlegged the CD to the point that it became, uh, they became my personal distribution and marketing team. That album was loaded. We had meetings 
before we launched the actual record? And how about this? The argument was, is if I can't the first single or is in the club the first single? I had spoke to M about it before we actually started the meeting, so he's like sitting right next to me, and I'm like, I start kicking him, like, like hitting him with my leg, because they start asking what, which one, but we had already talked about it, so we are sitting in the club. When I tell you the first, my first thought is when it works the best, like my first idea, like the first thing I say on In The Club, go, go shawty, it's your birthday, that's the record. Go, 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 go shawty, it's your birthday. Everything I wrote in that time period was a hit. You can find me in the club, bottle full of bug, mama, I got what you need, you need to fill the bars, I'm in the habit set, same. You say from 2003 to 2006, there's nothing in the culture that you can compare to it because the first album you, you're doing 13 million records and then 10 million records the next album. You are so successful that you can't write hood music. When hood music is what made you so successful. Just interesting food for thought, right? To say to an artist, you know what, you can't do that because that's not how I see you. And you go, what do you, like, it doesn't matter what you see, like, at that point. Some points it doesn't. Like, they think that the artist is, is doing things that they don't actually, they go, the same what they want from the actual artist. They pick things, the things that, that translated the strongest are, are for mine was the aggression in the project. So if I do something and it's like, play this Drake hit records are nothing from me. It ain't shit. If I said the same lines, the same words, the same production, same everything, they go, shit is whack, man. Cause they got a, an expectation from 50 Cent. Like you, what a, a, an actor would fear is happening to a, a hip hop artist immediately. You want what comes with being successful as an artist. That's what allows you to develop a comfort to be a true artist at that point. Because you don't, you're not making decisions based on finance anymore. You, you're saying, like, I got money. Like, if this record didn't sell at all, I'm getting ready to launch, it's not gonna mean anything. Like, I'm gonna still be right where I'm at, doing everything I'm doing. Like, it's like, if I haven't had an album out in three years and you haven't seen me lose any steam or any visibility or any relevance to the culture, then what makes you think? <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? It hasn't limited any of the actual things that I've been able to do because I've actually accumulated the finances and the actual business portion of the music business is allowing me to do different things. So. Now I look at it and I say, the guy that says, if you're hot or you're commercially successful, then when I said hip hop culture is now pop culture, it's so broad that if to be hip hop is to be a part of that. Like when you make something that really resonates strong with the actual culture, it's gonna go around the world. When I fell in love with hip hop culture, it was taboo to do the things that I was doing at that point, because it was considered what EPMD would say the crossover. Four years old, I knew music was if you. There was never anything else that stirred me the way that music did. When I got my first record deal, it was something that I dreamed about my whole life. I still knew in the back of my mind there was still a lot of work to be done. Just getting a record deal didn't mean the whole world was going to go from Jason to the world. When you hear my songs, I hope you feel in the mood when you're in the bedroom, like dancing when you're in the club, like singing at the top of your lungs. I'm Jason Derulo. Take back the music. To see my videos and other content, go to Music Choice On Demand.
you want me to run through? Vitamin water. Invested in a company, How Stuff Works. Frigo, high-end uh, male underwear. I started Cheetah Division as a film production company, and I raised $200 million. We broke it into 10 pitches. I sold the domestic rights to Lionsgate, and then we sold all of the national territories individually after. And after doing 10, I did it again. Started developing the show Power. This actually premieres on the Stars Network. The studio master sound. It's an audio company, and this could be much bigger than just selling headsets. In my career, I, I um, could identify with when I had an opportunity to do things away from tradition within music. When after Get Rich or Die Trying, I had such a huge experience because my first album was the largest debut in hip hop album, and it, at the time it had already scanned 10 million records, and it, it was clear that I was like recognizable around the world, like everywhere. So long for me to decide that I would go against the grain because when I fell in love with hip hop culture it was taboo to do the things that I was doing at that point because it was considered what EPMD would say the crossover you know it just wasn't cool for artists to be associated with a major corporation and now it's the way of the world it's the way you know artists function SMS Promotions, it was originally uh, an idea and concept that I developed to help Floyd. Floyd Mayweather Jr. is a good friend of mine. He's like my baby brother. He crazy, though. He crazy. Crazier than me. I don't even know how that happens, right? But he, uh, he had to actually go do uh, 60 days in jail for something he had a domestic violence case yeah, something like that so he had to go in and do the 60 days and over that period prior to that we talked about Mayweather Promotions Mayweather Promotions Mayweather Promotions and I was like champ there ain't no company like there's nothing there like it was just a name that he had on a checking account that he would put things through like you know but there was no LLC there was no corporation formed anywhere there would actually look and see that there was a company and I, and I was worried because I didn't see him actually make money away from, with anything away from the actual fights it's tough like the, the fighters getting a regimen really early but when they're not making a lot of money it's fight get the money spend the money fight fight get the money spend the money fight and gradually as the, the purses go up they begin to earn more they figure out how to get rid of the money Right now, to this day, right now, I could tell when Floyd is broke. I could tell when the money gets low. Because he'll start doing nightclub appearances. And um, he just didn't have, have the ability to stay, stick to his actual idea. At that present moment, there was it was impossible to do something right. No matter what you do, it's like, you said that? I can't believe you said that. Why'd you say that? You know, growing up in Decatur, yeah, I started out playing the trumpet. I had always been a writer, so if I'm writing in the studio, I kind of create something that will take you out of your everyday experience. When I was in high school, people really didn't know I rap. You know, now I'm coming back to my school. It just opens up their imagination. In music, you have to do that. That's what people want. They want to be taken somewhere. This is B.O.B. Take back your music. To see my music videos and more, check out Music Choice On Demand. Yeah, it, it is accurate. I have more success away from music than actual music. Well, I mean, dollar for dollar, but I did make, I made a lot of money with music. It's not one of those stories where, where I didn't actually receive compensation for my performance on it. And like, they made sure I, I did what I was supposed to do in the early stages, like him. The way the deals were structured, it was too good. I wouldn't even have the ability to be a part of business without music. You know, like, the success from 
away from music is cool and it, it helps me secure the ability to be an artist. Like if you financially have to make a decision that affects your creative because you're like, how much they gonna pay me? Okay, I don't care who the girl is. What? I don't care what it sounds like, I'm gonna rap on it tonight because I need the money. You know what I mean? Like then you'll compromise, you know, who you are to the public at some points and then that's not cool, you know, you want to see artists, you know, come in and do something special. There's no artist development within our culture anymore. So you're going to see a lot of guys come with one song and then disappear because they didn't, they're getting there early. I, I came, my first deal and album in 97 and didn't get a chance for anyone to really hear anything until 2003, you know, and I was writing music full time at that point. So it, it says that that, that period, made me good enough to create what was Give It To Die Trying and a full body of work that people could appreciate and opposed to just that one song. I had to launch a lot of records on my own at Interscope. So it wasn't really difficult for me to decide to, you know, to do it on my own. It's just, uh, they're really reactive. But I, it means I have to actually be proactive the entire time to get them to respond to it, to do what we need to do to keep going. This is why I stayed on, on cycle, you know? And it was like, if I didn't do those things, it wouldn't actually happen. But then it's not the record company's job to, to keep you hot enough to sell a CD. It's their job to put, package properly what you've created and market it to the general public, but not to build that, that thing that happens under it that, you know, makes everyone ready to actually invest in it. You will need Cartier frames to see my vision. It smells like three mix with this classy hood. And my ambition, the process was a lot different because now I need a, a concept for the record creatively to write it. In the beginning, I just wrote exactly what I was feeling was the right thing to actually write about what's happening around me and to me in different points. And uh, like that first album is almost, it's almost like the first record is like your whole life's experience or how it, your mentality is on the record instead of it actually having cre real creative choices. Like you just, you offer yourself there. And then when people get to know you, you develop, you have to be a little more creative. You have to come up with something else that actually entertains them. And I, uh, I chose prosperity on Animal Ambition because I've had a lot of positive things happen for me in my career and uh, I just wanted to write from that perspective and not all of the, the positive things connected to it. Some of the negatives also. I've had points with, in my career where I felt like um, without effort I was, like, like at, the, at that present moment there was, it was impossible to do something right. No matter what you do, it's like, you said that? I can't believe you said that. Why'd you say that? The only way you could uh, not make a mistake is by not saying anything and not actually being present. So it's just disappear, like get away in order to to survive. And when, when artists experience this, because of how much energy I had at one point around me, because it won't stay the same. If they have a long enough career, they're gonna have some peaks and valleys in it, and they're gonna have to figure out how to diversify in order to survive. I don't know if, if there's a moment that I've had to this point that could be the defining moment of my career. Like, I've had a lot of positive things happen, and I've had some interesting points too. You know, I just, Artists, for some strange reason, have the ability to take painful portions of the experience and make something special out of it, right? For Kanye, it would be a car crash. For me, it would be being shot. But I only have, the one Grammy I have is for Crack a Bottle. I couldn't even have that without him. You know, and that's why I have so much value for him, not just in, in my, uh, in my career, just in my life, because he's, he's a guy that, one of my best friends because I can trust that he's going to be honest with his, his constructive criticism when it's time to 
listen to the music before it goes out. He's the only person that did things that I wanted to do. Like, he had the Marshall Mathers LP with 23 million records sold, with flags all around the actual, the plaque. And I was like, yo, I want that. I want that kind of success. I feel like it happened for me, and it won't happen for the people, for other people, because I have to be open to It actually achieved the same level of success because it didn't actually work to, you know, to make it happen. Like, so I don't think it's, it happens over and over. I think it's a special group of guys that, that come into our actual culture that can sustain being relevant, regardless if it's a song, film, or whatever it is. If I had to choose one word to sum up my journey, I'd say success. I'm a hustler, baby. I'm a hustler, baby. You know the words in my songs. No, I blind. I'm out of money, I ain't tripping on her. I blow a whole lot of paper on clothes. Damn. Dig it, I'm a hustler, baby. I'm a hustler, baby. Get on my level, be careful who I kick it.